Until a couple of hours ago, we thought that this morning, which has just begun, we were going to be cycling back to Tokyo all in one day. And that was gonna be a bit of a challenge because we'd be going a path that we didn't know specifically. We would be going a different route than what we took coming here and it was a little bit of a question mark but it's a little bit shorter but maybe we can do it but maybe there's mountains and stuff that we don't know about yeah. like I don't know Google's data is a little bit sketchy on some of that so it was a bit of a risk but then Katie had a stroke of genius and realized that today is going to be the only not rainy day for like the foreseeable future and for the past three days and the whole reason that we came to these lakes was to like ride around the lakes a bit and she was like why don't we just ride around the lakes today and then get a van and stick the bikes in the van tomorrow during the heavy rain and just drive back to Tokyo. So we've made that adjustment. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually do the thing that we came here to do in the first place mm. today instead of just cycling straight home. And then we'll be using the support van for the, <laughs> <laughs> we're using the support van to avoid the rain to get home tomorrow. And that's this plan now. We are leaving the little Ryokan that we've been staying at for the past few days and we are going to be staying at one near Kawaguchiko tonight that is a little bit closer to where the van will be because it is going to be raining tomorrow, we think, after we pick up the van, but it's always a little bit of a risk around the Fuji area because the weather changes dramatically fast around here because of the mountains and all this nonsense, like nature and stuff. So we're gonna play a little safer and change where we're staying tonight, closer to a van, but now we're gonna pedal an adventure. Mm. We are starting off at Yamanaka-ko. This is where we've been <laughs> for three days. For three days. There's actually people out on the water doing stuff now, yeah. though, for the first I, and, time since we've been and here. And you can't tell if it's like a weekend thing where, like, in the off season, only the weekends are really where people go out and get their businesses operating and such, because that's when they're going to have people coming. Mm. Or if it's that it's actually a fine weather day. Probably a little of both. I bet there's been some people waiting like with their holiday this week for whatever. Like they've taken the week off like you have kind of. And they've been like, okay, we're gonna go to the lake and it's just raining the whole time. Yeah. So now they're all getting it all in like hand. <laughs> yep, you gotta slam in all of your swan pedaling and every other thing possible. Uh, something that's noteworthy about this area is when they had the Olympics here for the 2020 Olympics that happened in 2021, they had a cycling tra track that was like up through this area so there's all these signs all over the place around here that are like oh this is like the cycling path of the 2020 olympics like whatever like long distance like some sort of cycling thing i don't know about again we're some not category <laughs> we're not cyclists we're just people with bikes mm -hmm. and there are some monuments like kind of like these guys back here like these little um steel bicycles and at the other side of the lake there's a really big one that we saw like when we first came into the lake uh so there's this like you know Memorials to the 2020 Olympics that happened in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> it did, right? It did. It happened in 2021. They still call it 2020. You, you just, you just pushing it. Just pushing <laughs> it's a thing it a that happened. Bit. Sticking it a bit. One thing of note. So on Wednesday when we went out for our first rainy day, the uh, we got bait and switched by the Swan a boat. I gotta start this over, this is bad. <laughs> Fuji. We didn't think we were gonna get to see it. No. Let me get the bun view. Fuji. Are we going to the far end of the lake now? I think you can see it from other lakes too, can't you? Better be able to. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not changing my plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so we wanted to go on the swan boat and we noticed that the swan boat wasn't coming from this access point so we had to go around the lake and we got to the other access point and in a bait and switch situation we got stuck on a boat that was next to the swan boat and the swan boat didn't take off. The swan is now a floating and I think that that is fucked up that they let us get on a non-swan boat. Why? If it can float, let it go out there. I... Maybe the swan don't float in rain, baby. You don't know. What is it, flood? I don't want to get on a flooded one. <laughs> swan physics, it's possible. Uh. I 
All right, so it is definitely beautiful out today. The clouds are all kind of dispersing. We're actually seeing some blue for the first time in what feels like forever. But it's a little bit on the cold side, definitely brisk. And I am not exactly dressed for brisk. I'm wearing shorts as well as sandals. There's always this like ridiculous car traffic. Maybe it's just because we're here on weekends or whatever. But can you imagine living around here and having to deal with all this car traffic all the time? Like cars are like turning around and stuff. Maybe this is an accident? I don't know what's going on, but it feels good to be on a bike at this particular moment in time. Is this truck gonna turn around? What? Ooh, that was scary. I don't know. Can he see me? What is going on? All right, so this appears to be some sort of abnormality. There's something going on here. It looks like a military vehicle or something, or a self-defense force vehicle. Something has happened with it. Holy crap, dude. Does it look like one of the self-defense force vehicles is stuck in the woods? Yeah. Or that it's there doing something with the lines. I can't tell if look it's the behind it. hurt or if it's helping. Well, I think there's two. I think there's one lifting out another one out. Oh, maybe? Yeah. You can't see that. I'm going to say this is some pretty serious shit that's going on right here. The, whatever they're pulling up out of the woods looks like it's covered in trees and stuff. Like a hit went into a tree. And it looks like one of those big self-defense force trucks. Let's ride by. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah, we're going to take this one slow. <laughs> Oh yeah, so that's a bad day for somebody, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, so this is this huge truck that the front of it is completely destroyed. It's a self-defense force truck. Somebody had a bad morning. Wow. Did you see the that front of that thing? That was bad news. And it, like, the, the vehicle was all decked out in camouflage. So maybe they really just thought they'd just blend <laughs> right on in. Like, I don't know. That was savage. I, don't, I think somebody probably got hurt in that, dude. Somebody got hurt. Like, that real. was a serious accident. Um, but afterwards, we're going down this hill, and you can see that they have their, like, the blue lines on the road, and that's where the cyclists go. The only part of the road that's wet is that part of the road. Right here, it's dry because the sun has actually hit it, but we went through a wooded area, and it's all still very wet. And it's like so, a fairly steep this. Yeah, so, wow, look at that. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> And uh, so at one point I was just like, I gotta stop pedaling. I can't, I can't go any faster. And then I started kind of slowing down a little bit, but you can't do it very like aggressively or we're all gonna die and end up in the trees. And then I got down to where the traffic light was and I was slowing down, but I still felt like I was zooming past all of these cars and I wasn't breathing. Like it just didn't feel, whew. All right. Bye. Zoom in time. Yeah. Guys, we've been blessed. <laughs> we've been blessed with the little bro. How do we learn more about them? How do we become the masters of the Tanuki? Like, this is a reason to live in this country. <laughs> well, we're in a weaving city. So this is not the, the place to learn. We need to go to a ceramics city. I think it's Saga is where like you go to get like the hot tips on these guys, so we're gonna have to go back to Saga sometime. Okay. Hold down the fort, homie. <sighs> Behind me is one of the coolest amusement parks in the world. It's called Fuji-Q Highland. 
and the trick that they've got going on there is every time they build a roller coaster or it's called a jet coaster in Japan but every time they build a jet coaster it is like the biggest or the fastest or the most inversions or there's always some ist to it the number one whatever so it's a whole bunch of really extreme roller coasters all packed into one little theme park and it overlooks Mount Fuji. Like Mount Fuji is right behind it. So when you're going up on the hills, you can see Mount Fuji like <laughs> as you're climbing on these giant roller coasters and stuff. It's a really cool place. If you're into like intense roller coasters, you have to come here. Like it is one of the best places in the world to ride roller coasters. It's completely insane. We are probably not going to be doing this today or the bit of tomorrow that we'll still be in the area, but it's going to be something that we're going to come up and do again. We've both been here a few times. We both blows our mind every time. So one day we're gonna come up here and we're gonna actually be like, okay, we need to make a video of the intensity that is Fujiku Harando. <laughs> oh, it's ricocheting through my body. Oh. Fuck. What happened? I just hit my ankle pointy out bone on that thing. Uh, ah. So we got to go across these tracks. Yeah. It's stairs and shit. I don't yeah, know this, if we're going to fit, man. This looks like a whole process. <laughs> Google thinks this is... Oh, oh no. I gave. I had to give Google... Osaki ni dozo. You said Google thinks this is a bike path? Google doesn't think this is a bike path. Oh, Google. Katie thinks this is a bike path. Uh, fuck. <sighs> you gotta swing out a little further. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just very heavy back there and no weight up here. All right, here we go. Um, and I had to You're get- You're doing the same thing. I had to- uh, try and get ready for that lady um google's set to uh walking directions because in yamanashi ken it won't give you cycling directions i wonder why i don't know we made it down to kabuguchiko and there's a bridge that goes across the lake and we're hoping that we're going to get to hop across that bridge in just a second. But before we go hop across the bridge, we have to kind of ride through the little town that we had come to two days ago and just had a quick look around and had a fika. And you can see the bridge in the distance out here that we're going to be going across to get to the other side. And there are we going to be dropping off our bags or something? Is that what the plan is? On the north side of the lake, but possibly somewhere near the bridge. I'm not really sure. I don't know where we're staying. Shit got booked very quickly. <laughs> Look at this building behind you though. Look at that. It's pretty cool looking. Looks like uh, Sweden. Yeah. We've landed in a market actually that I think we're going to check out for a few minutes before going across the bridge. We really don't have any plan today. Just kind of like hang out and ride around. That's fun. I'm kind of excited to look at how the different food trucks are food trucks. Oh, like, like the physical build? Yeah. I feel like you're kind of at a shopping mall for the food trucks. And I don't really feel like I've been to one of those before. We've been to like lots of little Matsuris that have stands. This has all the vehicles sitting right there for you. Seriously, I never thought I would see this, but I just pointed out to Eric, there's a brick oven in this food truck. This could be legit nice pizza on the go. I can't fathom the price for that when you think about it. Cause like if you go to a store where it's stationary and built in and everything, you're looking at like 1500 yen for a pizza. How much could this be? <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. I eat pizza. <laughs> Hachiba. 
on this. <laughs> look at this bird, man. Oh, looks good. I'm gonna go see if my other food is ready. We're kind of going haywire with this shot here. We don't have a lot of options because what we want to be able to do is see this lake and see Mount Fuji and then it's like the sun is this way and we're, it's, it's, it's a whole thing about like lights. And we haven't even brought into account that there's food involved. <laughs> so we ended up getting a Cuban sandwich, a thing from a sloth vending place. <laughs> yeah, people... it was called the Sloth Kitchen. They do curries and vegetables and yellow rice. I don't really know what the seasoning of the rice is. Like, it's just yellow. And then uh, we it's got well. something called a tori ten, which is tempura chicken. And they give you two pieces of chicken and an egg. And this dude was like inside of this, the back of this thing with like oils and stuff and like making that. It's like really, really cool. And you're right, it's neat to look at how they have their individual trucks their all set up setup. differently. We talked to somebody about truck stuff and he said that you have to have different permits for different stuff that goes inside of the truck. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he's put a juice of some sort, like a gelatin -y, juicy thing inside of this. I'm not quite sure what it is, but he was also putting it on donburi, so he was selling these with rice as well. I don't know what that thing is. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Um, the thing about these truck food places is like, you tend to have like cool variety and cool areas and stuff, but sometimes the quality isn't like completely amazing, but I'd say that's a pretty, pretty good bird. I have no complaints. Yep. It's, it's maybe a little it. softer than I thought it would be. Okay, but that maybe might I be want the, a little bit more crunch. To it. We can't compare 10 um, karage. karage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking of like tempura. Um, and did you eat the part that had been soaking in the juice? I, I for a did, while? so that maybe yeah. that's unfair. Mm. Uh, I'm going to pregame some cow pills because I know that Cuban sandwich has got cheese on it. Yep. Yeah, this is a cool find. Like we didn't plan this at all. We just saw like a bunch of people on the side of the road and doing a thing and like, okay, we'll do the thing. All right, so Cuban sandwich, I can see cheese, bread, and I can see mustard popping up There's the side. There's a mouse seemed to have gotten into this. A mouse? Yeah, it was me. Was it you? <laughs> That's gonna have your crunch for sure. I wanna have a middle bite because- Oh, mustard. That's yeah, such a I rare flavor. I can smell flavor. the mustard. Can't believe they're doing Cuban over there. Mm. They're also doing like a curry worst. So it's like at a big sausage on it and- I want a curry best. Mm. They should think better of themselves. <clears throat> I'm sure in the world of like Cuban sandwiches, like in the world, this probably isn't real high on the best let, in the let world. Let me be the judge of that, not you. But it's so many flavors I don't get so often. Oh, it's so good. With the pickle, I think I could just drink mustard at this point. Must ham pickle. There's an orange sauce on here that I'm unfamiliar with. Like French dressing maybe? No, it's just melted cheese. Okay, I see. And pickles. Two types of cheese. <clears throat> White cheese and a yellow cheese. It's good. I'm glad I got it. I got a mustard situation though. So that was a fish. Usually when the fall colors start coming in, we immediately think, oh, we should go to some place. And then we try to plan a like trip there. We have to worry about weather. We have to worry about timing. Will the leaves have changed or not changed? This year, we're already done. Check it off the list because blau, yellow. And there's some red around here. It's not as prevalent, <laughs> but we've seen it. So I don't feel like I don't need to struggle with that task of chasing the color changing. I feel good about that. In Japan, there's a subculture of artists and hippies. <laughs> and they just kind of show up in groups, and that is definitely a thing that has happened here at this little food truck place. This is a bunch of artists and hippies selling like their goods and wares at the little artists and hippie shacks. <laughs> and they're always really friendly and nice people. It's, I don't know how to explain exactly to somebody that hasn't been around them exactly what the vibe is, but it's like, they're, they're really nice and they're kind of like, 
they're hippies, but they're super clean. They're not like you're, you're not like you're a stinky hippie. These are like these super clean and they have expensive clothes type of hippie. <laughs> they still have that hippie vibe, like connected to the earth and stuff. Only they've showered. You ever wonder how such an event can happen? There's this solitary child's boot. Where's the other boot? Where's the child? This concerns me. I was walking down this little path. It's a shortcut. Get back to Katie. But then, right at the last moment, a spider happened. Kawaguchiko. The great Kawaguchiko. <laughs> There's word, word pasta. Great lake. Kawaguchiko. I got it. <laughs> It's a pretty cool view. Fuji is starting to get bashful though, as he's famous to do. Hmm. Just hiding in those clouds. I wonder how much more we'll see him today. Yeah, I kind of bet that it's going to be the end of Fuji's appearance for the next week or so. But to be honest, this stuff over here is nothing to like frown at, you know what I'm saying? So near our house, some people planted some really small ones of these. They start out like so small and so pom-pom. You just want to go up and pom-pom them. So every time we see them now, got to give them a pom-pom. I think this is healthy for them. They should, they should feel pom-pom. Fuji's hiding a little bit, but we're finding some other weird stuff at kind of like a little, another like roadside stand. This one isn't as like pop-up as the other one was. This is a well-established kind of what feels like a flowery area. There's a lot of flowers and bushes around. And then this thing. I have never seen some sort of like pod thing like this. It kind of reminds me of like coral, but in the air. It looks so much like coral, I feel like it's going to be hard when you touch it. But Eric has informed me that it is squishy. A little bit, but still, it has that hollow feel to it. What? This is gross. Why would nature make this? I'm gonna tell everybody what I told you. It's like your friend that has that scarf and on the end of the scarf, it has the pom-poms on it and the scarf kind of like fell off or was hanging out of their bag and it just ran across the road and it's got funk on it now and you're like, your friend shouldn't be wearing that anymore. Just uh, sh shut up, Katie, talk <laughs> about Fika. <laughs> this is Fika time, man. We got some little Fujitons. Yeah, we got Me these a couple days ago. I just stopped at a random shop and they had these little Fujis. And this is the clouds, okay? You want it to be the snow, but it matches with the clouds today. Cannabis and marijuana tends to still be very on the edges of society in Japan. Like people still think it's like, ooh, scary, like that kind of drug. It's not like in the West where it's just like all over the place now, every five feet you walk and you can just buy marijuana from whatever. It's like still really taboo here. And the legality of it is still super, super strict. However, recently Coca-Cola, I believe, has started making a drink that is like one of those, like it's got hemp seeds in it or something, but there's like no cannabis in it left or whatever, but they're making products here and sort of starting to wedge into the mainstream a little bit this idea that like everything that comes from the weed plant isn't terrible and this is supposed to it's like an energy drink but it's supposed to be the opposite it calms you down it doesn't do that at all it's just an energy this is a drink this is a drink but i've had it before but i figured i would man that just exploded all over my bag um figured i would just give it another taste test here on camera because i don't know how many other people have noticed that this has been happening that this exists in japan yet um it, it tastes Man, I, I, the first time I had one, I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. I've had a few more. I, well, maybe you wait a little bit and it gets okay on the back. It's a little bit sweet. I don't know if I would call it good. You came home and talked to me about this drink for at least a good, like, multiple mentions within, like, two hours about this drink. It's really chemically tasting, I think. Here, I want Katie to taste this. She's better at describing things. <laughs> I'm, I'm more bothered that I want to find out if it's Coca-Cola. It's definitely... I think it was, I think, I, I think, I think, I think, I think I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. 
Somebody's bringing it in the yeah, game. I don't see it. Sun. Yeah, it's not Coca Cola, but. It definitely smells like um, some sort of like uh, soap you'd find in a fancy shower. <laughs> That's not a good sign for a soda. <laughs> It tastes a bit like watered down Namune. Did you learn that at drug school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you only handed me this because you wanted to say that. I only bought it because I wanted to say it. <laughs> All right, but like for real, right? Like that's a condom, right? Is their mascot a condom? Whoa. What do we got going on down here? It seems he's, pretty chill. He's just, he, he seems he's chilled out, that's for sure. But why is there a condom selling me weed drink? This is a fine moment to be stopped. Look yeah, at look all up. this. Notice, this is pretty common where they'll have Japanese car clubs that go on drives. <laughs> it's just like one after Holy another. Crap. It's like a rainbow. It'd be cool to rent something like that and just have around for the weekend. What would be cool if those groups would tell you, okay, I've got an open seat for someone to come on this little trip with me. Like you, you find that the you, you want to be in, in the group, you like the cars and you'd enjoy going on the ride. But you don't want to buy the car. <laughs> but I saw some free seats there. I could get up in there. I'd pay for a little bit of gas to be in this little group for a while. That'd be fun. All right, bye. <laughs> we've dropped our bikes off at the hotel and we've decided that maybe we're gonna try to go all the way around Kawaguchiko, hopefully before it gets dark because it's already getting a little cold. But this side of the lake has got a lot less buildup, as you can see. It's really pretty. Really smells like a forest. And there's a lot less cars and stuff, which makes the riding dramatically less stressful. Katie was like, yo, you want to do some Tom Sawyer shit? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, of course. There's this like a cool little rock we can come over here and be on top of. Fuji is completely in the shadows now, or in the clouds. <laughs> Yo, what is this? Look at this. What if a fish takes those rods and like, you know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> fish now has property. <laughs> fish be fishing for you next. Oh no! <laughs> you can actually kind of see the village and stuff popping up over there. It's really nice. The side of the lake's really pretty. Very cool insects happen kind of when summer meets fall. One of them, which we've shown in multiple videos over time, are these gigantic kind of Zelda-esque spiders. They're kind of like a vibrant yellow and they really look like they will kill people. They're really chill though. They don't mess with you. No, they don't. They, they're they're, they're they, hanging they out. Chill. But I always instantly, when I watch a spider, I immediately think about them jumping on my face. And when I think about them jumping on my face, I'm pretty sure they're thinking about jumping on my face. <laughs> so I don't trust them. Um, but I just saw this, I don't know if it was a bug or a bird. And down in the comments, you got to write whether you thought it was a bug or a bird. But it had like the bill of a hummingbird, the build kind of of a bird, but the sound of a bug. And I didn't see any feet, but what a hummingbird feet look like? Did they ever use their feet? I don't know. <laughs> it looked like it was doing hummingbird stuff. It was humming. But also bird, like bug stuff. You, yeah. you see a bee doing that same yeah, action. The, the, <laughs> that was a mystery. And I will watch that footage and go, was it a bee or a bug or a, a bird? <laughs> so it's nothing like when you come into a bathroom <laughs> and it's warning you about fire ants in the bathroom. <laughs> That's worrying y'all. So at this point we've sort of circumvented the whole lake, but not really. We're back to the bridge. <laughs> We've gone kind of like a la around the long side, but there's still the side on the other side of the bridge that we haven't gone around. So I think we're going to go around that and then maybe try to find some dinner. That's sort of the plan. 
It's been a pretty nice ride, but it is getting a little bit on the cold side and the wind has kicked up. So I don't know how much longer it's going to be a great ride. <laughs> We walked through this parking lot on Wednesday, it was completely empty. So it shouldn't surprise me that Fujigoko area is a weekend destination, but it certainly does to this magnitude that no one was here on like two days ago. But I mean, now it was, it's slammed full. It was also raining, <laughs> to be fair. At some point, they rebuilt this entire road so that it would have tunnels that cut off these little spigots that go out. <laughs> <laughs> this used to be the main road, and uh, it's pretty, pretty cool vibes right now. Look at this. Yeah. You got Heiko over here, or this might be someone's house. I really can't tell. I don't think anybody lives there. Uh, it looks clean enough. I think it's, I don't think it's Heiko. Not yet. It's on the way. Good spooky vibes. <laughs> A couple of things going on here. First off, when you come to these little resort towns, everybody stays in hotels that has included meals, usually breakfast and dinner, not lunch. So the result is that a lot of restaurants close at like 5 p.m. because most of the people that come to stay in these places don't go out and eat at restaurants. Luckily, we have found a little place as it has food and it actually seems like it's kind of like popular. There's quite a few people here and they have like steaks and hamburgs and things like that. And they also have teishokus, like your standard fare. And what I got was a chili sauce fried chicken. Now, Katie's food isn't here yet. Mine has been sitting here probably for 15 minutes because another thing that happens in Japan that can be a little peculiar is that they will bring out one meal but not the, all the meals. So like one person will get their food and is expected to start eating. Of course, as like a Westerner, that feels weird because it's weird to eat before somebody else has food, right? <laughs> like you're kind of supposed to all eat at the same time. But we've been waiting so long now that uh, I'm just going to get into it and Katie can hit the bricks. <laughs> My food's getting cold, y'all. So it's kind of like a sweet and sour sauce. I think of this as almost like a Chinese style food, at least in Japan. Chicken is fine, the breading is fine. Um, yeah, I would say like it was like a thousand yen, it was like a bill. So for that, you get some miso soup, you get some rice. Um, it's, I think it's a fine deal. I think uh, maybe I'm regretting not getting the steak here because that's what every single other person has ordered that has come in. They have like a sirloin steak. But I don't know, I think I was just kind of tempted towards the chicken. I'm in the, I'm in the steakhouse eating chicken, it's kind of my MO. <laughs> This restaurant's the kind of place that has girly magazines to check out while you're eating. <laughs> Here is the entrance to our abode for the evening. And it is another Oriokan. So we have tatami floors, which is like a woven grass mat. They actually measure rooms in tatami and this is kind of an interesting way that you can look at it because of the way that's been laid out. So like you can see like this square here, tri rectangle is one tatami. How many was it? 11. 11 this tatami. This area that does not include that area. Yeah, so um, anyways, this is just where we'll be staying for the evening and it's uh, actually really clean. It smells like they've put this tatami, it smells like it's funny that I'm saying that, but you can tell how new tatami is just by the way it smells and it's like, it smells like, it smells like tatami, I don't know, it smells like grass? I don't know how to explain it to somebody who's never smelled it before, but it's a very distinct it's flavor. It's grass. Grass, just grass, that's not yeah, the way to put that's, it. that's how I put it. And you can also tell just by the color of it how it's pretty green. Um, it'd be nice if there was some that was old, so you could see an old one and a new one, but the old ones, it did kind of turn brown. It looks a little old. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this hasn't had sun or it's made from different grass, who knows? Um, but anyway, the room itself is pretty nice. And we kind of expected it to be a bit of a bummer, but it seems like it's going to be kind of all right. Yeah, from the outside, it looked like it was going to be a bummer. Yeah, the outside of the place looked yeah. a little grim. I was like, yeah, this is good. Um, this one actually has a private shower, which is a bonus, but it is the time to shower. <laughs> Here, film me getting a <laughs> <laughs> So this is, the, this is really rare actually to have a room that's like a tatami style room that then also has private bath. Like I am trying to think if I've ever stayed in a place 
that has that mixture. But um, anyways, we'll go in here and uh, you can come in here, here. I plan on, oh, I can stand here. Oh, that's surprising. Yeah, well, no. No, I can't stand here. I can slouch there. Ooh, it's cold up there. And then we've got uh, quite a nice, I think I might take a bath here. You think I could, think it could be a thing? I could get in here tonight. Onsen. Ah, let's see. Ah. All right, fill it up. <laughs> I like how deep it is, though. <laughs> my nipples would be nice and warm, but the tips of my knees are not going to be warm. Nope. <laughs> Out and exposed. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> Shit. <sighs> All right, it's shower time. Clothes shower on. Time. <laughs> oh man, this thing makes it worse. We have finally enjoyed a day where it wasn't raining on that trip. Well, I also enjoyed the days that were raining as well. They were fun. In, in some ways. But in a way, like, I guess those days made it kind of um, even better once the rain stopped. It's one of those things where, like, things are crummy, things are crummy, and then they're not crummy, and it's double good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I couldn't so believe the, the day that we got to have. It was really, really nice weather and just leisure and mm. easy and not climbing up a mountain but not also fighting the rain just go and enjoy so it was a spectacular day to me and the good news is that we actually had another day of it and we will be bringing that to youtube soon so if you want to make sure you see that hit the like button and the subscribe button and the bell button and i think all the buttons are now good because they took away the dislike button or you can't see the dislikes don't dislike the video dislike it that's good oh yeah <laughs> good advice and also you, outside yeah. of youtube you can go on to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and enjoy random stuff there. But we're also been live streaming on Twitch. And if you want to get even more involved, you can head over to Patreon where you can get cool perks. And also a huge thank you to everyone on Patreon for making good times like this happen, the rain and the sunshine. We will They control have... the weather. <laughs> Do you know that when it happens? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if that was a Patreon perk. Yeah. All right. Control I'd like to see weather. a rainy day. <laughs> Damn it, Patreon. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you in the next one.